come out. <laughs> I was trying to bring the chair up. That's a pretty big Father in heaven, we thank you right now for this day. We thank you for this great opportunity. Lord, we do bless your name because your name is worthy to be blessed. We call on your name because we all our help comes from. We thank you now for what you've done. We thank you for what you're going to do, and we bless your name again. Father, protect us. For those that stand around the world that are protecting us, we ask for a blessing from them. Them, their families, 
Father, we ask this again in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Said we'd like to uh, utilize this up with. Uh, the comments line has been set up. One, the number, phone number is 1 917 1022. The access code is 323470 pound sign. And this is not a toll free number. You may be subject to long distance charges according to your own complaint. When the chairperson is open to me for public comment, please follow the instructions. Dial five, uh, dial five. The moderator will unmute your line when it's your turn to speak. And notify you by announcing the last four digits of your telephone number. Please announce your name and address. And you will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Any person wishing to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes to speak. And he will only be given three minutes one time. Thank you. With that being said, we go to our agenda. Approval of the agenda. Yes, ma'am. So we have to advise the agenda. I believe it's 19 to 14 A. That. Yes. Do I have motion? We motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Right. Okay. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. We go to the first thing on our agenda. The board to consider adoption of a proclamation designate February 21st, 22, 24, 22 as a 4-H livestock show and sale week as agenda by Commissioner New Michael Newman. Oh, well, Mr. Chairman, you can see these fine uh, students coming in. And I guess we have, have the proclamation read. We have a motion to approve that. Please. Commissioner, would you like to read it in its entirety? Are we going to do a picture first? Uh, Mr. Bishop, I believe, does he have the proclamation? Mr. Bishop. I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> you have the proclamation, Mr. Bishop? Yes, sir. Will you read it in its entirety, please? I'd be honored. Y'all are ready. Proclamation recognizing the 4-H Livestock Club members, whereas the youth of Taylor County is one of the county's most valuable resources. 4-H Livestock Club members contribute to the agriculture industry through learning how to raise and sell livestock. The 4-H Livestock Project teaches youth how to apply leadership skills, acquire a positive self-concept, build confidence, and learn to respect and get along with people. Whereas 4-H Livestock Project has helped many youth in Perry, Taylor County, Florida to gain confidence in themselves by being responsible for an animal that is solely dependent on them. The project helps youth develop responsible behaviors through the daily care of keeping the animal fed, a clean place for the animal to live, and working the animal daily to be prepared for the show ring, show ring decision-making skills through learning what fees <coughs> and financial management skills through keeping records of expenses for the project. Whereas North Florida Livestock Show Week showcases the incredible ways that 4-H inspires kids to do and highlights the remarkable 4-H youth in Perry, Taylor County, Florida, who work each day to learn and value hard work, agricultural commodities, and make a positive impact on those around them. And now, therefore, the Taylor County Board of County Commissioners do hereby proclaim February 21st, 24th, 2022, as 4-H Livestock Show and Sale Week throughout Perry, Taylor County, Florida, encourage all of our citizens to recognize 4-H for the significant impact 
they have made and continue to make by empowering youth with the skills they need to lead for a lifetime. Done in order this seventh day of February 2022 in Taylor County, Florida. How about that? Second. Motion second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Motion back. Okay. I'd like a picture if y'all can come down. Okay. Or if they just want to stand behind them, it'll be helpful. You want to come down or stand behind? It doesn't matter. I can't tell from this angle. Oh, we can see them. Okay. We can't roll them down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put it back up. Colin, come right there in between Wyatt and them. But we have contractors who can perform the work. Okay, so yes. I won't, we won't have to wait on that. Not then. No. Is there a system maybe in place that would remind us when these things are expiring? That's or? not the issue. We've had to work through some um, necessary insurance, and it's been quite the process to try to work through um, the USNH insurance that's required. And I think we've just finally gotten to the point where we are ready to um, to put the project out for bid again. And we, we've just had to rely on contractors for work in the meantime. Okay. And so do you, did you say when the lots would be fixed at the uh, mouth of the container? Um, it should be just about any time. Okay. So we've received the quotes, and it's just a matter of issuing the purchase order and moving forward. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else got anything? Okay. Motion approved. Motion second. We approve the consent agenda. Okay. Board. Hey, pardon? Oh, yeah. You need vote. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed. We go to item number 13, the board to receive bids. Well, Professional Consulting Service for Surgical Steam Sterilizer Project set to this date at 6 p.m. or as soon thereafter as possible. This is a public hearing. Bid process, you got a bid? It's just to announce the amount of the bid and, um, re and receive the price for that, and then I'll ask the board um, to Approve the bid committee. Okay. We'll open it. Because we only received one. And
I don't know if I'll pronounce it right. Getty, Getty. And <clears throat> looks like the amount of the proposal is fifty-seven thousand nine hundred seventy-two dollars and eighty-seven cents. Fifty-seven thousand nine hundred seventy dollars and eighty-seven cents. Is that what you said? Fifty-seven thousand nine hundred seventy-two dollars and eighty-seven cents. The names for the bid committee that were provided from Doctors Memorial Hospital are Melissa De La Cruz, Hannah Turnmeyer, and then um, we would like Marcia Durden on that committee. So that we don't need to take any action on that. No, no more. sir. We'll bring back the um, we'll bring back the recommendation um, okay. to the board. We go to item number fourteen. Go to hold a public hearing. Set for this date is 6.05 p.m. or soon thereafter. The hospital to receive public input and notify the public of the possible grant application submission to FDOT Transportation Alternate Program, TAP, for the 2028 funding cycle. Sidewalk construction along US 221 from Ash Street to approximately Grave Drive in reference. Now, this is a public hearing. Is that what I hear? This is a public hearing. Anyone want to speak to or against the sidewalk for 221? Hey, everybody, this is Melody. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this is the second of two possible grant applications we will be submitting. As you know, the um, first application and primary application that was approved was Johnson Stripling to Ash. That's the 0.57 mile mm -hmm. concrete, five foot wide sidewalk. This will be a 0.97 mile, five foot wide concrete sidewalk from Ash to approximately Graves Drive In if y'all approve moving forward. There is no match due from the county, and this is 2020, 20, 28 funding. Okay. Good, Ms. Melanie Cox. I think we brought that up before at the last meeting, and this is the final public hearing. We need to vote on this. It's a motion to move forward with the submission of the grant application. I'll second that motion. Motion and second. All in favor, but say aye. Aye. Now, we got a 14. Thank you. What, you got something else, Melanie? No, I just want to thank you very much. Um, I will be back next meeting. There was some interest in doing a master plan for sidewalks, and I found a, a sidewalk master plan. I found a funding for it. So next board meeting, I'll be back to do a presentation on that. Okay. And just for y'all's reference, um, Grace Dragon was founded in 1950, and I'm including a little historic feel on that in this grant to hopefully strengthen it by um that historical aspect aspect but thank y'all so much she said Ms. Melanie question for you yes sir what do you think the ballpark time is to kind of coordinate that sidewalk along with the repaving and widening of that street um, so, which one so. Astrid Astrid we have the funding now this is uh, when you fix to do it what I'm saying why I'm asking her, is there any chance that this sidewalk could go into the same project, maybe, uh, because? In the Kenneth project, this project here is for 2028 20. funding. Yes, so I seriously doubt that it could be phased in, because I think Kenneth is, is, this is coming up very soon. Right. But I thought it would be so much more economical to do them both at the same time than what I'm Understood, and if the DOT folks weren't sitting in the room, I would tell you that I do have some monies in there to try and get some of that done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just I'm just wanting to hear what it takes. 
Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Okay. At the beginning of the meeting, we asked for number 19. Uh, I believe that's Mr. Bishop, right, Mr. Bishop? About the Keaton Beach. County attorney to discuss Keaton Beach property sales. Yes, sir. Moving that number 19 to number 14A. Well, as you all recall, if I may, okay. um, I cited the statute that's involved in this situation in uh, chapter 125.35. And I looked and I looked and I looked and I looked and I really couldn't find anything but the statute. Um, I looked for an interpretation of the statute. Um, I talked to Mr. Griner uh, with regard to um, interpreting the statute. Okay, you have two, two parcels. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's one parcel that, let me read you again, uh, 125.35. The Board of County Commissioners is expressly authorized to sell and convey any real or personal property and to lease real property belonging to the county whenever the board determines that it's in the best interest of the county to do so to the highest and best bidder for the particular use the board deems to be the highest and best for such term and such conditions as the governing board may in its discretion determine. And that's one of these pieces of property is fits under that statute, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think that was the second one that y'all heard uh, the other day. Remember? Everybody remember? Yeah. Okay. There's no, pr now the second piece was under subsection two, when the Board of County Commissioners finds that a parcel of real property is of insufficient size and shape to be issued a building permit or any type of development to be constructed on the property or when the Board of County Commissioners finds that the value of the property is less, is $15,000 or less, it's determined by a fee appraiser. Is it designated by the Board or as determined by the County Property Appraiser and when do the size, shape, location and value, the parcel is determined by the board that the parcel is of use only to one or more adjacent property owners, the board may effect a private sale of the property. The board may, after sending notice to of its intended action to owners of adjacent property by certified mail, effect a sale of conveyance of the property, a private sale without receiving bids or publishing notice. However, if within 10 days after receiving such mail notice, two or more owners of adjacent properties notify the board of their desire to purchase the parcel, the board shall accept seal bids for the parcel for such property owners and may convey such parcel to the highest bidder or may reject any and all offers. Okay. So the difference between the two pieces is one is you've got a Jason owner um, and two you don't. Uh, the under 1A, um, the, our, our building official determined that uh, it, was, it was buildable, that you could build a thousand square foot um, structure mm -hmm. on that particular piece of property. So what you can do if you decide to, to sell it, you um, can advertise it in the highest and best bidder of that particular use of the board deems the highest and best, then you know you can sell it. Okay. Mm -hmm. The other parcel is there's an adjacent owner, as I understand it. And if there's an adjacent owner, then you've got to follow the and it's worth uh, uh, it's it's non buildable, but it's worth more than $15,000 pursuant to the appraisal that was done. And so the board may, um, uh, once it's determined that you would uh, notify adjacent owners and effect a, pro a private sale, but after sending notice of its intended action to owners of adjacent properties and more than one adjacent owners, 
then you would receive bids, sale bids. Okay. So the decision that you need to make is number one, do you want to sell both pieces of property pursuant to the statute that I just read? Or two, you don't want to sell, hold on to the property. Or three, um, with regard to the one that doesn't have the adjacent but is um, um, buildable, you could lease the property under 125.35.1a. Or you can just do nothing. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thought about this a lot before we spoke about it last time, and I've even thought about it even more since our last meeting. And um, first, I want to clarify that I don't personally know the two um, citizens that, that the sale would affect. I've talked to both of them, I think, maybe one time at home. I see them here, but I don't have a real a personal connection to them, and they do not live in my district, so they can't vote for me. So I just want to say that I want to make it clear that uh, th the reason that I am against selling these properties is because it just doesn't feel right. Okay? Yes, we could sell them, or we could lease them, and we could get a little bit of tax money. But at the end of the day, you've got one gentleman that lives, I believe, next to the lot that's not buildable. He stated before that he's in his 70s, and he did not, when he bought that home, he didn't plan on, after he retired, to have to be forced into buying a piece of property that he's been taking care of for a number of years, just because we decided that for some reason we want to sell it. So that just doesn't feel right to me. And then with the other uh, people that live next to the other uh, property, we heard her stand here and say that they took their life savings to buy that home down there. And they, it didn't sound like from what she said that, that they could, that they had planned on having to spend this extra money and that, that basically they couldn't. So again, that just doesn't feel right to me. It feels like to, well, first of all, we don't have any compelling data that says that we have to sell these properties. We've got lots of other properties in the camp that we own, and we haven't tried to sell them. So why in the world have we picked out these two lots versus trying to sell everything that we own? It, that doesn't make any sense to me. It feels like that, that it would be backing these people up into a corner and either forcing them to have to spend money that they did not plan on spending or let the properties go and somebody um, may be putting an undesirable business or something right there up under their nose. So I just don't think that we need to do anything. We, we need to just forget this whole thing unless we're going to try to sell every property that we've got in the county. This just doesn't feel right. So I'm against doing anything. Commissioner Newman. Well, I, I guess one question I may have is you know, what changed last, last year when we got direction or, or gave direction to staff to do surveys and title searches? I mean, I think we, as a board, knew that this type of meeting was certainly a possibility. One thing I'd like to clarify, I believe I understand Mr. Bishop, but from our workshop, my question was, can we offer the first right of refusal to the Webb family with the parcel that is buildable? That's still my question. No, not the, the so there's, there's, there's no guidance and no case that allows for- I couldn't find one, let's put it that way. So the statute then prohibits that action? Well, it, it doesn't even say anything about it. Uh, and it, and if it it would appear to me, and this is just logic, sometimes you try to be logical, that part of the statute would have said that, whereas the second part of the statute says it when it's non-buildable. Does that make sense? So 
So you're saying if that was an option, then it would give it would, and spell it would be, out that it would be in the statute. In, in the statute. That guidance. But it's not. Not. Okay. But where this whole thing started was a gentleman came to us wanting to buy one of those lots. The reason all this started out for sale. He wanted a place that he could unload and unload and unload and load his uh, business there. He wanted a place to unload the crab boats and uh, put his bait on them and go out and uh, not leave a bunch of trash there, but he needed a place besides the public boat ramp to work his business. And that's the reason we started this whole conversation about these lots. And that's what it all, you know, wonder how it got started. That's how it got started. And he's still interested in bidding on that, on those lots. That's what, you know, last time I talked to him, it's been a while since I talked to him. But, you know, that's where we're at with it. That's the buildable lot. You no, about. the unbuildable lot. He needs a place to unload his trailer load of stuff and load stuff off his commercial boat right there. There's no place down there he can do it besides the public boat ramp. And you tie up the boat ramp, him trying to unload his commercial business and there at the, at the boat ramp. Okay. And, uh, and it just, in the Stanhatchee boat ramp the same way. There's really not a place there for, they've used it over the years, but they block Space there, unloading stuff and loading stuff every now and then. You've seen that, you know, they make it. Yeah. 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 has an impact on the traffic. When we built the boat ramps years ago, we just didn't have the commercial people in mind because most of the commercial people down there had their own places on, on the canal there. And, they were, okay. and some of them, there's still a lot of commercial dealers there that unload and load on their own lots. And uh, I mean, that's where we're at with it. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. I would suggest that this one person who seems to be the only person interested in this lot, that he used the public boat ramp. But I, I recall that when we met a couple of weeks ago, um, you stated that um, he, when, well, first of all, when we were talking about how undesirable it may be, I think you stated at that time that, well, he doesn't do it that often. Uh, just a few times a year, maybe. So if that's the case, um, I don't think that it would be an issue to tie up the boat ramp for just a, just a, a, a not very long versus doing something that I feel like is just just wrong to, 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 to a family. Uh, when we've got that public boat ramp, he can use that. And most, you're, you're correct, most of the people in business already have their their places on the canal. So I think we will be causing a great injustice to someone for one business that does have an option to load and unload his, his uh, crab traps. He, he said that, you know, he's a taxpayer in Taylor County too, and he lives down there, and uh, but he don't have a place on the canal. And he feels like he, that, that county property belongs to him as much as does anybody else in this county. The neighbors, one down the road, and all. He felt like his tax money, you know, and, and that county, that county lot belongs to him just as much as everybody else. But if nobody can use that lot but the adjacent landowner, I mean, that's kind of a one side of the deal. He's not. And it looks that way to me, too. Yeah, well, you know, uh, if, with that, I own part of it, too. Yeah, you do. And I and do too. Everybody else in here owns part of it if, if you own a home and pay taxes. So that argument doesn't hold water to me. Uh, because he's a taxpayer, we hear that all the time. Well, I pay taxes, I pay taxes, but that doesn't mean that you that that that, that gives you the right to do something like we're talking about doing to someone. It just, I mean, and I understand. I, I you know, I'm I'm all for the businesses, but I just in my heart, I can't do something that doesn't feel right to someone that's retired is going to be pushed back up in a corner. To purchase something when he shouldn't have to do that. Well, man, he needs a place. To, that's his business. That's a part of his livelihood. He needs a place to unload and load. I mean, the county needs to be working in the direction to get a commercial loading place if they're not going to do this. 
I would agree. There's, there's not a specified location in Taylor County so that Taylor County gets the recognition for the amount of commercial fishing that goes on here. We don't have a place to keep these or it's in that. And we're honestly losing the caption of those revenues because folks are going to different places and different places get credit for the uh, fishing and for, for those revenues that Taylor uh, County really should rightly get. Well. How much revenue are we talking about? You're, you seem to know how much is it? Well, I, you know, I'm not a commercial fisherman, but what I say is, is every revenue that there is is worth the coin. And certainly, Taylor County should should be, uh, you know, the one that gets credit for it, not an adjacent county that's willing to provide and, and accommodate for these fishermen to do business. But you really don't know how much revenue we lose. Right? I don't have a direct figure, Commissioner, but if we're not getting credit. Uh, I mean, the empty set is an empty set, so you're not getting any uh, recognition or any way to capture how many of those figures are there. So honestly, I can't give you a figure because we don't have a place to be able to capture that. So no, I don't have a number to tell you what that is, but I'm telling you, we're losing that opportunity. Okay, C could I ask, does anybody know where this gentleman is doing his business now, or has he been out of business all this time? I is he working that. now? Does do you know if he's on the now? No, what about this? No, what about it? I know this. He has to stack his crab traps up on his boat and just back his boat into the public boat ramp, but he can't carry no more than just one load. He can't have his trailer load of traps there and make trips back and forth. So when the season opens up, he has to get them out there for open day of season spreading them. And he has to take them up at a certain time to be legal. And then he has to haul bait back and forth during the season. So he needs a place. It's not, I mean, he wouldn't be using it every day. He'd just be using it every now and then. And, and we got other crabbers that come to this county that go to Ecofinia River, Dollar Creek, and Steen Hatchie, and everywhere else, Spring Warrior. And I mean, there's a, the reason they dodge keeping beach is because there's so many people that vote, and if you can't, they can't unload enough there to be worth their time, and they don't want to block the ground. So, I mean, we need a place if we, you know, that's what, that's what this whole thing's part of. We need a place for commercial people to use. And that's, that's what it boils down to. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You don't need to make it an argument. No, I need to let's, ask let's our be, attorney something. Let's, let, let, let's be cordial. Okay. Now, I heard that same story, same song and dance, and it's good. But is anybody here that that, well, that property affected? All right. Let's, let's hear what they got to say. Maybe that might have changed. Maybe he won't purchase it. Mr. Chairperson, Commissioners, I mean, I understand the crabbers need a place, but, you know, they're working at, you know, loading traps at four or five o'clock in the morning. Keaton beaches, I mean, it'll disrupt, you know, the residents. I mean, Keaton Beach is basically a residential community. Although we do have, you know, commercial operations there, mostly fishing guides and a few crabbers, but uh, it's a residential area. And, you know, to allow people to come in and just put in whatever business they want, you know, what's to stop this person? And I'm not picking on this one person, uh, but to stop somebody from coming in and start selling crabs right there at the bridge. Um, what's to stop them from doing any kind of commercial activity. You seem like uh, the commission has given them a green light, you know, to do whatever they want to. You know, there's no covenants, there's nothing to protect, you know, the, the property owners. And there have been lots down there for sale for years. You know, the individual needed a lot, one much more ideal than this one that we're talking about. And there was opportunities to buy that. So why this particular lot? And as Commissioner Beagle said, if you're going to do it to these two, do it countywide. Do every one of them that the county has on the tax rolls or doesn't have on the tax rolls. Do the same survey, do the same appraisal, and get rid of every one of them. And then level the playing field. Don't just pick and choose 
these two because somebody at one point in time needed a place to offload crab traps. It's not an ideal place to do that because of the bridge. The guardrails are there. It's not a safe place to do it. And as far as somebody buying it and building on it, it is not, it's inadequate. It may have the property size to do it, but you're right there on the road, you're right there by the bridge, it is not safe. And there's so many different reasons that, you know, this property should be just left as it's been for the last 30 or 40 years. And, you know, if the county needs to recoup their money for the survey and appraisal, let us pay it and be done with it and let it go back like it has been. I'm not opposed to people working. I'm glad they do. But, you know, it's just not fair to the residents, you know, that are down there. I mean, it's a, like a residential community. And um, I just hope that, you know, I can you know, ask y'all to see it from, you know, our point of view. And I'm not the only one affected. But uh, it is really, it's not, it's just not the right place because of that bridge. And uh, uh, it's just not. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Um, actually, um, the Florida statute for his, the property that's next to his house, that statute states actually only for the size and the shape of it on his lot, where the, I think where the crabbers want to go out, will only allow the statute says he gets, he can be done a private sale, but you have to let us know the adjacent homeowners who are next to that property of that sale. It, the Florida statute doesn't give the size and shape and the, of that property out to actually any owners. So I don't think the crabbers could actually even bid on that piece of property, to be honest, according to that Florida statute. Now, the property that's beside our house, I think the property that the crabbers are not even interested in, and plus the size and shape of that is right next to the bridge. Um, I'm asking that just, just to just leave it alone. It's disrupting. I know he wants to unload and load his traps, and of course I wasn't here when all that went on, but um, we're just asking that you just, just leave that that property alone, just leave it alone. There's animals that live on it. We're just asking that. And like I said, we have our life savings in that. We just ask of you. And you're just disrupting more than one part. This isn't about, I know he wants to unload and load, but what he's wanting to do is not affecting, is affecting more than one family. It's affecting a lot of families. Um, unfortunately, it's affecting each of us. Now you live on one side and he live on the other right. side. Mm -hmm. You live, live on the unbuildable side. No, I live on the buildable side. I live in the um, the little build. It's I live on the buildable side. I have the little yellow house that sits right there. Um, in the in the shape of that lot, I I know he said he can put a. I'm just asking how I don't sell it. If before I'm just. Before you, if you just have it in your mind, if you want to sell it, I'm asking before you do to please come there, step on that lot and see, and see how it's going to affect us. So you can actually, looking at a picture just does not do what that lot looks like justice and how close we are and how that, how it curves right there, that bridge and, and the animals and stuff that live there. I just wish that you just please leave it alone. Um, and I don't think the Florida statute will allow that lot to be sold to anybody but Mr. Collins or or the adjacent homeowners, which is me, and or the uh, our neighbors across the street, the Williams. Um, I just that Florida statute is just it just doesn't say that for Mr. Collins. I wish it said it for us. I really do. But it doesn't. I can't say that it does. According to that statute, it says that our lot should just be put up to the highest bidder. But I feel like that we have got, me and Buddy have gotten caught in the middle of this. We were not here when they were unloading, but we are going to be the ones that lose out of this. 
Um, and I'm afraid we're going to lose our life savings because of it. And I'm just asking that you just leave our lot alone. Um, sell Mr. Collins his lot, and let's just let it be. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Mr. Bishop, um, would this be considered discriminatory if we sold these lots, or especially the one that's unbillable, or, or both of them to these people? Would it be considered discriminating against them? And what are the chances that we, the county, would be involved in a lawsuit over this and cost the taxpayers even more money? Well, there's always a chance of that um, that being uh, being being sued over this if it was determined that that it, that it was capricious. It was capricious, or if it was uh, singling out. I, to be brutally frank, I'm not real excited about that particular statute. How it, how it's read. I'm just not. Um, but that's the way it's, that's what it says, you know. So the answer to your question is, it could be. Thank you. Mr. Newman, is your district? Yes, sir. That's right. I believe I did hear you say in there, Mr. Bishop, there is the potential for police. Yes. If this board so chooses to allow those adjacent landowners that option, or does that have to be put out to the highest bidder? Like what? Read it again. It says, I'm sorry to put you through that. No, no, no. I'm, no. Sure. I'm, going, I'm going to just read part of it, uh, Commissioner. Um, this is on the, the the lot that was buildable, okay? And to lease real property belonging to the county whenever the board determines that it is the best interest of the county to do so to the highest best bidder for the particular use the board deems to be the highest and best use for such length of term and such conditions as the governing body may in its discretion determine. So the answer to the question is yes. Lease it. And you could lease it to uh, the uh, highest and best bidder for on the lease. Well, that has to go to bid, not made available to the adjacent landowner. No, it's not, because that's that's the one that, that Jason landowner is subsection two. And you read the whole thing. Just the Board of County Commissioners is expressly authorized to sell and convey any real or personal property and to lease real property belonging to the county whenever the board determines that it's in the best interest of the county to do so. Comma to the highest and best bidder for the particular use the board deems to be the highest and best for such length of term and such condition as the governing body may in its discretion determine. Hypothetically, hypothetically, uh, say it was determined that the highest and best use of the property was really nothing, uh, um, that it wasn't uh, such that, and then you would say, well, how long a period of time do you want to lease it for? Five years, ten years, you know. And who would be responsible for the liability of it if it was leased to it? You know, the, I mean, the landowner, the landowner's always got liability. Right. You know, they'd have to have, have to put liability on them if anybody else got on a lot more, uh, you know, if they leased it. Now the county is responsible for somebody getting hurt on it, you know. Well, with regard to a lease, you know, you can put provisions in there for a hold harmless in a lease. Mm -hmm. All right. And what's the good in the book? I make a motion to approve the 
motion that we leave it as is and do not offer to sell or lease these two properties. You have a second. For the lack of a second, what's the motion? Second. Second. We have another motion. Is that one favor? Would like to say? Is there a way, Mr. Bishop, or does the county currently have uh, similar type lease agreements with parcels of the same type of that? Not to my knowledge. Yes. Not this. We. Not to my knowledge. It'd be the same situation. That's right. Mr. Chair, I'd like to say something. Okay. If we're going to do this, I would second that motion, but under the circumstances that that boat ramp is closed down to all other people but commercial when they get ready to, for a certain period of time to unload their traps and get their boats and their bait in, we're doing them wrong by not giving them a place. Is that possible? They hire people, they pay salaries. They pay taxes, they own land in Baylor County, they need a fair shake too. They can say, wait a minute, if y'all want to go trout fishing, you need to go put another round. We got these crabbers unloading on this certain day here, and that's it. I, I, yes. Is it possible to, to implement a regulate? <laughs> because of the type of grant funding we received for those boat ramps, I don't know that we can limit any type of activity. I've heard that in the past, you know, and but right. you, you're getting it at Steen Hashi in there now, you know, but we, I know with the grant money we got it, it said non-commercial, it said, you know, but they're being using it over and over, you know. But we're not, but we haven't been limiting the use of the boat ramps to one particular type of user. So right. it's open to everyone. Oh. Which I believe are the terms of the grant agreement. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, that just cut, you know, if you, that just cut the more, well, even that much more, you know. You know, if we're doing it wrong, then we just shouldn't even let them use the ramp stop. Well, then if they can use it. They can use it. They can use it like everybody else. Right. They can use it like everybody else. Yeah. But if, you know, people go to complain, well, I couldn't get my bogey, you know, so these, these boys run over and spread a load of traps there, you know, then we have to have you do it. Yeah, I believe what the question was, if we close the boat ramp or a land of the boat ramp to only commercial fisher people, and that would be my concern. If we if we don't allow residential fishing you know, folks to use You've got more than one lane there. You could close one just for commercial while commercial people would unload and have one lane open. You know what I mean? They need a fair shake too, is what I'm saying. The commercial people need a fair shake. They need to have their, they need to be able to run their business in Taylor County too, without any question of that. Is it possible to distinguish a lane and then you're not closing? Well, we, I mean, that's something we can certainly look at and report back to the board. Okay. Um, at what times do they normally load it up? I'm not sure when, well, I mean, there's people coming down there all the time, four to five o'clock in the morning, and puts in. They work the tide. Everybody works the tide out of the Keaton Beach Canal, especially now that it hasn't been dredged in years. They work the tide. They come with the big boats. They come and you know go in on a good tide and come back in on a good tide. So I mean, like he said, it might be four or five o'clock in the morning. It might be two o'clock in the morning. But people need to be able to. Everybody needs a fair shake in these. There. It needs to be for everybody. Don't be just for a chosen few, just because they live there all the time and they don't want to hear no noise and they don't want to smell no crap. Like it. it needs to be for everybody. Yeah, and I could go along with closing <coughs> one, because one lane 
And no. we're not saying that the public can't use it. Not at all. The public still can use it, and that way it would give these folks, you know, their chance to to um, continue on with their business. I like that idea. That's good. I mean, I mean, a fair shake for everybody. What I'm in this position for. I want everybody in Taylor County, taxpayers in Taylor County, to be on the same level. I don't want no this and that one above us. Okay. I mean, I. It hurts some people's feelings, and I don't mind because everybody needs to be on the same page as far as I'm concerned. Mr. Blunt. This is very similar. The issue that that on, say, for instance, Jacksonville Beach or uh, over in Panama City Beach, I'm familiar with it. That there are certain lanes where the public can go and get to the water. You know, they've got the big condos, but um, right next to um, the condo that I own, there's a, uh, you know, there's a big area, which is uh, an area of a public park. Where, and then if you go down, uh, like we were in Jacksonville, and there's, it's, it's private, and then all of a sudden you'll see a lane where people can park and then walk to the, walk to the beach and enjoy the beach in that, that particular area. So your lane, I, I don't think you'd be in violation of the grant with regard to uh, opening up a lane strictly for, you know, your fisher people, or your crabbers. Right. Right. I don't think or designate a lane that the yeah. crabbers can use yeah. Yeah. and the other be public. And right. they can use that when the crabbers are not there. Right. The designated yeah. lane. Yeah. And another thing about grants too, and I haven't researched this one, is you know I don't know that the grants are for infinity, you know, forever. I think it was nine nine years. Well, that's yeah. remember. long term. That's not well. <laughs> I'm just I'm just doing it in my head, you know, because we did that. I think there's about another seventy something. You got about seventy more years to wait. Okay. My only concern, if we restrict residential traffic, there may be an issue. If you do what now? If we restrict residential traffic at 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 Keep Beach, if you restrict residential traffic, I think we just designate one lane for com the commercial can use for one, and they can use the other. That be restricting traffic in general would be my only concern. You want to do that. We really don't have enough lanes to start with. Right. But we've got more lanes than the canal can handle now anyway. <laughs> During scholar season, it's, a, it's, it's too many people there. And y'all know that. I provide it down there knows that. But if it was a commercial, one of them was more commercial, one non-commercial, the, the regular fisherman could use it, you know, and then a man pulls up there with a trailer load of crab traps to unload on his commercial boat, you know, when he got to the ramp, he could just, people could just use the other side. They wouldn't have to, you know, make him move. So he got. Could, could we maybe designate that one lane, say, in the hours where we don't have as many um, uh, um, recreational uh, fishing and boating going on? Well, the tide would mess that up. Because the tide's coming and goes all the time, day and night, you know. So. But if you did it at night, you you would have less of the. That's what they've been doing. In, that's what they've been doing, trying to get down on the tide at night and unloading things in the past. Is what Mr. Bishop, the one that they want the place to unload down there, Mr. Allen Bishop, the one that started this whole thing about a place to unload down there, and he they would go down there and try to beat the traffic, and, but then. When the fish are biting, crab season. I mean, there's a world of folks go there. You know. But if you, if you um, just had a sign there or something where, okay, this this lane, this particular lane is um, open strictly for the uh, commercial people between the hours of such and such, say 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. or something like this, just right. throwing that out, and that way. Um, you probably would not have people backed up down the road trying to get in and um, 
that would accommodate, I think would accommodate everybody. And I also like the idea of seeing it possible to get by the grant. You say, can we have this lane designated to commercial fishermen and then everybody else? When the commercial fishermen is not there, the commercial traveler is there. Is that possible? do some research. Okay, do that research and come up with us. Okay. All right. We can do that. We can go back and we can come back to this after we yeah. have some research yeah. and get some, get a okay. some training on what we can do and what we can't do. All right. Okay. Good deal. Thank you. All right. Well, we probably just need a motion to table this. Um, we will decide it. I'll make that motion that we table this item until we are able to get more information on what we're allowed to do and not allowed to do. Okay. Got a second? I'll take that. I just wanted to say one other thing, if I may. Um, yes, Jim. You might want to consider um, that, um, like, um, was saying that, let's just say hypothetically, at five o'clock in the morning, uh, you have somebody who wants to residential to put their boat in or whatever, and the commercial um, fisher person was doing it at that time, that the residential person must yield to the commercial fisherman at that particular point in time. In other words, yield to allow them to put their crab traps. You follow? Y'all you, follow what I'm saying on that? Yes. yes. Yeah. That might be a, yeah. a way. A way also. What I'd like to do end up doing is that we do it at such a time that it accommodates the commercial people, but not during the the um, the hours where we have the most um, recreational traffic down there. Because of what I don't want to do is have all the fishermen saying, oh, now we can't go, or the, or the um, recreational people saying, oh, now it's backed up already, now it's going to be backed up longer because we're letting them in. So if we can designate that time period that's kind of the off hours, that, that would be what I would be for, not having it during peak times. Okay. Mr. Newspaper Man, did you get that right? <laughs> Thank okay. Thank you. We'll go to item number 15. The board to consider appointment of one member to the Dr. Memorial Hospital, GMH, Board of Directors, as agendas by the one dependency county administrator. I don't think you voted on that last motion. The table motion. Yeah. The table. I don't think there was a vote. Okay. There was a motion and a second and not a vote. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Yeah. Commissioners, <laughs> um, we have received two applications for the one vacancy in the Doctors Memorial Hospital Board of Directors. Now, I don't know if the um, the folks who, uh, if the applicants are here, but um, for Mr. Mitchell's application, I would like to point out that on question number four, um, have you or any family members worked at DMH in the last five years? He did answer yes. And um, I haven't spoken with Mr. Mitchell, but it is my understanding that possibly his, one of his children, is this Mr. Mitchell? Hi. <laughs> Yes, my daughter currently is there, but she has put in her notice. Uh, she is leaving. She has gone and taken a position in Monticello where she's making more money. Okay. I was not aware of that. Um, so, but she's currently an employee and she submitted her letter of resignation? She said she did. She talked to her charge nurse uh, yesterday. And she was going to work tonight. She's got two more nights that she'll be working. She only works Monday nights. She'll be going tonight and actually putting it in writing to give to the charge nurse that she had notified. Uh, that she will be staying. 
Yippee yay, yay. <laughs> well, so everybody's looking over here. Yeah, so over there. So according to the DMH bylaws, um, there is a section that well, I can hand it to you. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I don't believe that's a condition of the lease, but it is something that is in the bylaws. Well, there's always a way to skin a cat. Okay? Hypothetically, if you go on and uh, do the uh, determination of who you're going to appoint, if it would be Mr. Mitchell, then it would be subject to his daughter? Yes. Yes, sir. Hey, and see hey, you a long you? time. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Uh, uh, subject to her going through with her uh, resignation uh, with, with Dr. Swanson. That's understandable. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. Somehow you've given these to me to pass out. I can pass them out. These are the For the body. I, I'll pass them out. <laughs> there are two applicants for this position, so we would just ask you to rank them. Do you know how to spell Yippee Kaye? <laughs> <laughs> and just as a reminder, the best I applicant know. is number one, the second best is number two. Hunter, do you wish for us to move on to the next item? And then come back. I don't want to confuse these folks. Go ahead and vote and, and sign. Be sure to sign it too, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom right hand corner. Yeah, once they've done that, you know, I don't have any problems with them. Okay. Yeah. Well, to the I got to do the power math. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. Can you wish for us to move to the next item? 16. The board consider approval of the Florida Farm Transportation SDOC, North County Outreach Program, Scott, reimbursement uh, agreement, reconnect, wide resurface, <laughs> Nat Daniel Road, uh, 359A, the adoption of resolution authorized and executed by the chair as agenda by Kenneth Douglas. Mr. Okay. Chair, you should have in your agenda packet a draft agreement as well as a resolution. That draft agreement is for the DOT stock program, whereby we will re be receiving uh, $1.37 million for the widening resurfacing of that project from mm -hmm. its connection at Wright Road all the way up to uh, its intersection with Pisco Road. This is um, one of the many tools that we have been able to use over the last 15 to 20 years uh, to help lower the cost of our infrastructure improvements. So our recommendation to you is that you approve this agreement. And then subsequent to that is that the board endorse you being able to sign it as chairperson on behalf of the commission. Okay. Motion to read the resolution by Tom Longley. Motion second. Tie along with the mission. Right in the middle of my tie frame here. Right. Resolution. McDaniel Road Widen Resurfacing Agreement Signature Authorization. You want it by title? Yeah. Tie along. Okay. That's the title. All right. And just for your. Um, peace of mind. We did forward the agreement to Mr. Conrad last week um, just so that he could review it. It is the same verbiage that we have used on the most recent ones that you received, so we don't think that there's anything that's a surprise in this. Okay. Mr. Bishop, you heard that? I heard that, and it's a little bit different from the usual one, um, but it's, you know, uh, it's the same situation. And, uh, I think they what they do, uh, Kenneth, every once in a while is they 
re revamp them. But the one thing that I noticed, and I, I may have missed it, but I read through it, because there are two of them that are almost exactly the same up there. So that, I didn't see a venue on there. That is strange, because it's generally Leland County. I know, I know. I, I was excited about that now, if I, if I missed it. We don't want to tell them. Well, they're here. <laughs> Uh, there it is right there. Oh, it is? It? Uh, it's letter I on page 12 or 14. They hit it on the stand, didn't they? Yeah. Um, I have a problem with that. But it's not a thing I can do about it. It's just hard. But I don't have any problem with it. And it, okay. it refers to it as it's the department's place. Motion to approve. didn't say Leon County then, did it? That's why, see? I did read it. So they could choose that. <laughs> oh, sit. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, they need to give us the, the opportunity to. Uh, to be fair, they gave us one point three seven million dollars. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's what we're interested in. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Good. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Right. You got it, Ken. It's number sixteen. Um, so seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 As well as approving the agreement, because there's there is two two parts to this. Okay. Just to be clear with the minutes. Your motion. Okay. Number seventeen. Uh, board to consider approval of SGOP SGOP reimbursement agreement. Reconstruct. Why research contract or, or research contract road adoption. Of a resolution authorized execution by the chair as agenda by county engineer. That's contracted road, right? Yes, sir. We're going from the scale of the outside to 30. Yes, sir. Okay. The yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Motion to leave that one alone. Second. Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Resolution. Contractors road widening and resurfacing agreement signature authorization. I'll put one on there if I want to see no, that. No, no. Legitimately, it's only just a resolution that says you, as the chair, are able to sign that agreement right. on behalf of the full board. Okay. We have a All in favor? Aye. All right. there you go. <clears throat> so the motion is. Inclusive of the approving the agreement as well as you being authorized. Perfect. Or right, MAT. So, oh, I'm sorry. I'll let you the board to consider approval of draft local agency program reimbursement agreement proposed in joint participation with FDOT and project management of the design phase of the Granger Bridge replacement project as agenda by the county engineer. So some of y'all with a little bit more tenure here probably remember back um, as much as 2011 is when some of this first started. Uh, Grange Bridge is a one lane timber bridge that's down kind of in that southeast corner of Steam Hatchie. And beginning in year 2011, we started receiving prompt corrective actions notices to our public works facility that there were situations and circumstances that were requiring attention in order to bring the bridge back up to a safe traversable condition. That kind of went back and forth for many years. Um, the bridge kind of continued to worsen in its condition and it kind of reached the culmination in 2019 where we officially closed the bridge to vehicular traffic. And it was at that point in time around that 2019 that the bridge sufficiency rating, which is an evaluation that DOT does every two years on all our bridges to say how adequate or inadequate it is, it finally became eligible for the federal bridge replacement program. That's important to us as a local jurisdiction because that provides the funding for us to do the bridge that you see down on the beach road today, the ones we've seen up on 14, the one we saw out on uh, 98. So we try to take advantage of that anywhere we can. It's a long process, um, especially for these low volume um, kind of residential area bridges. But 
The good thing is, is it's finally made. Um, last year, that funding became available, and DOT kind of initiated their process towards uh, addressing the replacement or reconstruction of that bridge. And once that began, they kind of reached out and said, we think that there is an opportunity with this bridge to um, partner with Taylor County and deliver a better end product for the community as a whole. The mechanism that they would do that with, because it involves federal funds, is a local agency program project. Your experience with the LAP program is with the Green Street Sidewalk Project and more recently the old Dixie Highway Sidewalk Project. Both of those were federal funded projects that were designed and inspected or managed by DOT chosen consultants with the county partnering in an administrative, a project administrative role. It's very similar to what they are suggesting to this. Um, they believe that by bringing Taylor County into the equation, I think you'll get more of a familiar, a familiar face in the process, mm -hmm. whereby with DOT strict use of the project, you may have that sense of, well, the state is going to do what the state is going to do. They kind of feel that, and I'm speaking for some of the people behind me, they kind of have this thought that by bringing us into the equation, you're going to get that face-to-face, -face, familiar face, um, that maybe we can wind up in a better place at the end of the day as opposed to you know, constantly being in an adversarial position that's sometimes more typical. So what I'm doing is I brought this to you, uh, attached to the agreement is a draft format of it. DOT has a design consultant selected right now. They've already started their planning design and environmental aspects of it. They're not at yet the right-of-way certification and the initial bridge design configuration is just getting ramped up. So this is why they're trying to bring us into it now. This agreement is for the to pay or to compensate the design consultant. They would execute, they being DOT would execute a separate uh, agreement in addition to this one that would allow us to recoup uh, whoever, whether it's mine or Hanks or whoever's associated with the projects, time associated with the project. And then later you would see another agreement come that would be addressing the construction dollars. And then there would be an even another one that would address the construction engineering inspection dollars. But what we'd like to do is at least put this before your face in the draft concept. This is the first. This is the first time that, um, you know, we're kind of spreading our wings on this one. It's a long ways from a sidewalk to a bridge. Um, and I've had numerous conversations with them that I don't like to go into anything that I feel like I don't have a good fighting chance. If I feel like I'm going to fail, I'll tell you no. Um, I don't necessarily feel that way. DOT definitely doesn't feel that way. They know that this is going to tarnish their record if Taylor County gets <coughs> this position and, and they fail. So we brought them here. We've asked them to, to um, be present in case you guys have some questions. The, the gentleman on the left in the second row there is Dave Sarlamak. Uh, the lady next to him is Melissa Morgan. She's the one that's over the All the Bridge program. And her is uh, Cassandra Laney, who I work with routinely. Actually, her and Dave, I work with routinely on all these scraps, Scott. These are the people who are bringing this stuff to us. So I will open the floor to them. Um, if they have any comments that they'd like to make, other than that, uh, feel free to ask them anything and everything. And I will address anything you have to me. Yeah, I just appreciate the presentation and thank you guys for being here and for all these funds that can't even make their way to Taylor County. So thank you. I have much to say. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and Mr. Wanley, for the DOT. Uh, what Kenneth summed up for you is exactly what he uh, he says it much better than I could. It was basically a a bridge project that's in, it's going to affect the local community. And if you know how DOT works. They're my brothers and sisters, but they're not this, they're not me. But if you know how DOT works, we get a little bit clinical, and we could maybe lose sight of the local community's vision. 
And we feel like bringing the county in and someone like Kenneth and uh, and uh, administrators come with them, they, they know the community and they can definitely bring that particular vision home for us. We feel it's an important project. We also feel like Taylor County is the perfect county to use to see <coughs> how bridge development and, and delivery uh, through a federal process can be honed and maybe particularly extended to, to other counties as well. We've only done this with our bigger counties, Jacksonville. We haven't really extended out with federal grants for bridge replacement like this before. So we feel very confident Taylor County could do this. We wouldn't come to Taylor County if we didn't think they could. And he's right. We want them to succeed because we succeed when Taylor County succeeds. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, I'm, thank you for being here first. I'm familiar with this bridge and um, I, we're heading in the right direction for sure. Um, with a couple of questions is, um, do you have any idea of how long this process will take? And is it going to be a bridge that will accommodate two cars or one as it is? It's currently one, one. correct, Melissa? Yes. And it will probably go back as one, but we can't say that yet because we, have, we are bound to go through a project development and environment phase that will look at options. There will be a, a no-build option, and there's two other options that are relatively similar in nature to what's there today. One of them would be a direct replacement to what's there today. Another one may be a, a slight change to the curvature of the road and the bridge itself because it does this 9 feet once you mm -hmm. get across the bridge. So there's going to be some modest looks at what it will look like. Now the bridge program that the funding is coming from does not work. It does not allow for a major improvement to the bridge. It's kind of an in-kind replacement, but we can do some modest adjustments through this process. The county will be engaged throughout the entire PD&E phase. And then there will be some decisions made once we get to the end of that phase as to what that bridge design will look like. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I understand you correctly, then during the design phase, if it's determined that enhancements would be better for the traffic flow there, then that would be the course that's recommended? There could be some recommendations that way, yes. I don't want to go too far into that because there's some limitations as to what those could be. So we want to put a bit of exclamation on Given that. that type of design, does that extend the period that it takes to go through that process, or is that typically the process you guys go through? That's that generally the process. We use it. Uh, we will run that planning phase to start, and then we'll be moving into design as we go through the planning phase up to about 30 or 60 percent plans. Mm -hmm. Then we'll transition to a direct design phase to finish out. And that takes a couple of years. So there's plenty of time for a discussion. And if you look at the back of your package, you'll see that there's a, um, an initial timeline there. And it's showing the bulk of that being your right of way certification as well as your design concepts being, as he said, within now to say 2024. And then once you get past that, you get towards your implementation. Okay. Mr. Moody. Do you have something to add to that? <laughs> Thank y'all so much for being here. We appreciate what you're doing for us. Yeah. Okay. So what we would do is, if the board is agreeable to the concept of the proposal being Taylor County would go through with the lab the lab um, project and participate in the design phase, at least initially, then what we would do is bring back uh, a non-draft agreement. Uh, we'll get that to Conrad again. And the reason we bring it back is because it would require the same accompanying resolution um, to, for you to be able to allow the chair to execute. Yeah. So we will have to come back. Uh, how quickly they get us the agreement? Well, if, unless it's tomorrow, because the agenda item is due tomorrow because of the, the way February worked out. If not, I assume it'll be early in March. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
Who's this guy? Remember y'all already have to say what happened with regard to the uh, appointment. We're ready. Right. Hi. <coughs> We need to wait till uh, we have a full board. I think that would be the best thing. Uh, there's other ways to do it too. Um, I don't know if I ever told you the story of uh, a, down in Fanning Springs. They had a mayor's election, and it ended up in a tie. And so that was when Kathy Bishop worked for me. Uh, Sonny's wife, was, she was a lawyer. And so we did the research on it. And guess how they determine a tie vote for an elective office? Contest. Pardon? Contest. Right, and draw straws. That's how it's done. And what was the funny part about it was, so we put all the, we put the straws in a, in a bucket. And there was a lady and a man. And the man came up to the podium and I said, well, got to figure out who's going to draw first. And being chivalrous, he said, oh, she can draw first. And guess who won? She did. <laughs> <laughs> and so she ended up being our mayor for like 12 years. You know? I think that we should wait till we have a full board. And that way, that gives time, too, to um, verify that, uh, his, that Mr. Mitchell's daughter has indeed resigned and left the hospital. So there won't be any question around that. So um, do I need to make a motion? I make a motion that we table this until um, the next meeting With given that we have a full board. I'll second that. Second all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to hand these to uh, the clerk. If anybody wants to look at the ballot and look at um, the higher map that we did to figure out the public record. Okay. We had we have discussed 19, so we'll go to number 20. The county attorney to discuss the city of Perry portion of the opiate opiate settlement agreement. Well, um, we got a, uh, a correspondence from the uh, city manager that um, the city uh, is yielding to uh, whatever settlement was done and the distribution of how it was done to the county. In other words, they're kind of saying, y'all handle it. And so probably the suggestion would be that everybody in the county, even though you live in the city, you're a county resident, right? Right. Yes. Um, so my thinking would be in that um, whenever, let's see if you get any money <laughs> and then make the decision of how you want to distribute it. Um, because, or the other way is, you know, if you're doing a service for somebody, they come in, where, where do you live? That sort of thing. So, but uh, I think we need to wait and see because I don't know how much money it's going to be. If any. If any. So that's my suggestion. Okay. So we'll take the advice of the account. Yeah. All right. Can we make a motion for that? Take the advice of counsel. Yeah. Wait and see. Yeah. All right. Motion. motion. Got a second? Second. Motion second there. In favor? I will sign aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, okay, Mr. Bishop, you got another one. Yes, counsel sir. Counsel, discuss end of uh, settlement. Good speech. Well, 2021. Yes, sir. It's a, it's a pile of money, but it's going to be divided by a bunch of folks. Yeah, no. So, and it's sort of, sort of hard to figure out what they're talking about because they've got all these codes and, and um, numbers and so forth. But since, since we're in it, my suggestion is we sign the agreement and release and see what happens with regard to whatever they send us. 
We've yeah. got some money on the end of it. I think it's $55 million. Yes, sir. Did I read that correctly? Um, 65, I think. 10 of really, million. on that particular one, if I looked at it, and Luana, help me with this, I looked at it and I didn't see where um, Perry was involved in that. It, they didn't I, do anything. And so, I did not see that. I, I do see that they have a percentage. So I did email Mr. Romano and I have not received um, any correspondence back as, as of right now. About once a week, uh, Luana and I get a stack of emails uh, <laughs> on all these um, opiate um, lawsuits. And as long as we're involved in it, um, and we have a chance to get some money to help some people who are um, strung out, for lack of a better term. Um, my suggestion, unless I see something that um, you shouldn't, I suggest that you sign it, and release it, and see what happens. So that's my suggestion on uh, item 21, y'all. Okay, we need a motion on that. Yeah, you got a sign. Okay. Motion. Second. All in favor? Say no. Okay. You got anything? Uh, the only other thing that I have, um, uh, Mr. Chairman, is, and I haven't heard, but I assume that the uh, purchase of the property at Dead Man's Curve went through. Um, the closing was today. Oh, the closing was today? Yeah. Okay. All right. And so uh, we sent a check, a signed check to Mr. Curtis for him to distribute the, the funds. All right. Okay. So that's one. That's done. Yeah. And the other thing in uh, Kenneth has left uh, with regard to the other piece, um, we think we have an agreement for a swap. And of course, that's under 125.2. And we would swap a portion of what we purchased for the other, the little piece that we needed uh, to complete it. And so uh, we've got to do a legal descriptions and do advertise like like we did with the boat ramp. But that would be good because that would be no more funds out. We just swap property. Yeah, I, I'm excited about that because we got a thing. Uh, from the other side saying, y'all have waited too long. What we agreed to, we're not going to agree to the price. And I'm saying, oh, Lord, have mercy. Here we go. Yeah. But your engineer said, well, let's see if we can get a swap. And so um, we're going to push that as hard as we can. I think, I think that will happen. Thank you. Okay. Just keep your fingers crossed and pray. <laughs> all right. That's all I had. Um, Thank you. Thank you. County Administrator, I Twenty two, the board could consider appointment of a commission to serve on the search committee for the Office of Medical Examiner for the Second District of Florida as agendas by County Administrator. The current medical examiner, who is Dr. David Stewart, has announced plans to retire. Um, he has agreed to stay on while a replacement until a replacement is found. Um, in your packet, you'll see from Mr. Jack Campbell, who is the state attorney for the Second Judicial Circuit of Florida, and he has requested consideration from the Board of County Commissioners to appoint an interested member to serve on the search committee to select a new district medical examiner. Um, I believe I sent a message to every commissioner to see if anyone was interested and received a response from one, but I, obviously I don't know if anyone else would be interested to serve on the committee. That was me. Um, I'd like to serve. Okay. Any other questions? You want to hear, do you need a motion for that? Yes, sir. Do I get a motion? I make a motion. Second. Approved. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'll reach out to Mr. Campbell's office and let him know. The county administrator discussed uh, FY 2022 board calendar. When I was reviewing some of the dates for um, agendas, and, um, for meetings, and for paying invoices, I realized that because of how the days of the week fell out with February's calendar, we're, it looks like we're having back-to-back -back meetings. 
Um, and we can't change our meeting for next week because we have an advertised public hearing. Um, so what I would like the board to consider um, so we can pay our bills in a timely fashion is on February 22nd, which is the date of our next workshop, I would like the board to have to consider having a short special meeting um, at six o'clock to approve the invoices and then follow with the workshop. Then for March, um, what I am asking if you would consider changing the dates of the meeting from March 7th, 15th, and a workshop on the 22nd to March 7th, 22nd, and then have our workshop on the 29th. And then in June, well, um, in July, we have a meeting on the 11th and 19th, so I'm asking if we could have a special meeting on June 28th for the same purpose, to approve invoices. What is that now, June? June 28th. So, let me back up. So, February 22nd, we already have a workshop scheduled. I'd like to have a meeting, a special meeting on the 22nd just to pay invoices unless something catastrophic comes up. That's um, okay with me. And then, um, okay, and then March, change the meetings to the 7th and the 22nd and workshop on the 29th. Change one on the 7th. Keep the one on the 7th. Okay. Change the one on the 15th. The 15th to the 22nd. Okay. And have our workshop on March 29th. And then in June, have a special meeting um, on June 28th prior to the workshop. Danielle, yeah, does that work for you? Yeah. Okay. You're welcome. So we'll just have a special meeting on March 22nd. So? No, the 29th. I was going to say, it could we leave it as is and just have a special meeting? Does that work for you guys, or is that going to put you in a problem? Well, I think we need to have. Uh, or are you just okay? Do you want to have? It seems like the same that we're doing for this month as meeting. Just maintain the schedule, but have a really special meeting to play. The, 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 we need. We still need a, a regular meeting in March. Sure. It's okay. the 15th. Yes, and then you just want to have the workshop on the on the 22nd. And a special meeting. Okay. I would like to say on March the 15th, which would have which would be a regular 9 a.m. board meeting, mm -hmm. I will be in Washington that week with um, my kids' school on a school trip. So okay. I'm not going to be here. So. Uh, unless you have a conflict with your your schedule, Commissioner, um, I'd like to see it the seventh, the twenty second, and the 29th, But it's not a must for me if it's a conflict for you. Which date are you having? That is, is it is the question about the 29th workshop? I just wondered if that'd be the easiest uh, fix since I was doing the two ways. So you want to have a, a regular board meeting on the 7th and the 22nd and then and then have the 22nd have our workshop at the same time. So that would be a 9 a.m. meeting on the 22nd and then have our workshop following that. Well, I mean, that, that can be a bulky session if that's what the time is. We'll have to get scissors. <laughs> or do you... I don't want to change it because I, I would miss the. Um, well, yeah, if we change it, then that way I would still. That's right. If we do change it, then I get to attend the meetings. If you keep it, then I will miss the one on the seventh. I'm sorry. So yeah, I like your idea. So, so it's fine with me if you if you think we need to have an evening workshop the 29th. And I'm not trying to make all that confusing, but. To have well, a workshop and a board meeting at nine o'clock may be a bit of a stretch. So, right. Okay. So here's what we're trying to be considered. Okay. If and we if have, if that lines up with the commissioner's people, then make twenty second. 
If we have our two Maybe. meetings on the 7th and the 22nd, then then we can, that might be too long of a session. But if we don't have any items to discuss on the 29th, then at that point you can make the decision if you want to, if you want to really schedule a workshop on the 29th, then on the 22nd, you can, we can cancel it if that's what you wish. Yeah. Would that be, would that be better, Commissioner Manning? I okay. think it would, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we have March 7th, 22nd, 29th, February 22nd, we'll have a short special meeting prior to the workshop and then add a special meeting on June 28th prior to that workshop. Yes. Okay. Send an email. I'll, if, if the board will vote on this, then I, we will revise the calendar. Okay. And send it out. Do I get a motion? To motion to change the dates as stated. Motion check all in favor. Uh, okay. Twenty-four. County administrator to discuss informational items. So I just wanted to bring to the board's attention that we are doing quite a bit of work at the sports complex um, this week. We have been there um, constructing batting cages. We are working on the. Um, walking path um, to have some of those repairs and then we've started on the work for the baseball fields um, so they will be closed um, until um, all of those all of that construction I'll call it is complete but we started on the baseball fields today so there's a lot going on in the sports complex Did you have a chance to look at uh, benches for the um, so Greg is working on a plan for that he's been um, it's been a busy couple of weeks, but he, he has started um, just a drawing that we can use. Um, I'll see if we can get that back to the board quickly. Thank you. All right, comments and concerns from the public, but none agenda items. I don't know how long you you should be spending your meeting money, Bobby Todd, and I'm a lifelong resident from State Hatchie and current president of Tri County Board of Directors. And I want to introduce Mr. Julius Hackett, and if you take the time and we're fixing to pose a great initiative for this county, it's something that's fixing to come in here about like the lights did 80 years ago. And it's going to be about broadband. It'll be an interesting conversation. And I can uh, move in. Uh, Mr. Newman, when y'all got off on the uh, on the crap shops, I was trying to remember how we got them in and out before we had the boat ramp. <laughs> I'll stop that. And the, and, the, and the bridge, don't spend money on the two lane bridge down there. That used to be our lover's lane. It's always been a one lane road. <laughs> we have to spend that money on it. Anyway, uh, I, I want to concede the rest of my three minutes to Mr. Hackett, and this time we will give you Mr. Hackett, the CEO of the Tri County. Okay. Uh, good evening, Commissioners. Uh, since this time last year, uh, Tri County Electric Co op has tasked us, staff, with taking a really hard look at high speed internet options in our service territory. Our service territory is Madison County, Jefferson County, Taylor County, and the western part of Dixie County. We've taken a really deep dive looking at large packets of, of land and the amount of members who are impacted by either underserved or no service of high-speed internet. And I think that many of us have already seen the disadvantages that a lack of good, solid internet places us. Good, solid, high-speed internet gives us an opportunity to have economic development options. Our real estate becomes a little bit more valuable. It offers great opportunities for K-12 learning experiences, not just elementary and high school, but it also includes college, and then folks who are involved with continuing their education online. Uh, we have opportunities to 
engage in telemedicine. I don't know how many of you have actually interacted with the doctor or a health professional online. I, for me personally, it has been a wonderful experience. And the television or the TV or the entertainment options are far more affordable if you are starting to stream these options as opposed to some of the more traditional direct TV, dish networks, and, and some of these other opportunities. So we are taking a hard look at this. Uh, we pulled together our financing options. We pulled together partners who can help in this effort. We've taken a hard look at partners who can actually own and operate uh, the network, the electronics part of the network, as we maintain and operate the library portion of this infrastructure. There are a fair amount of dollars coming down, and, and these dollars are unprecedented, coming down from the federal government that would be passed on to the states that the counties will have an opportunity to divvy up. And we just want the commissioners and then the staff here to recognize that there is an organization in this county who is committing to serve every member of this cooperative and they will have access to a high-class, world-class, fiber optic-based network where it won't be a matter of speed of their networks anymore. It won't be a matter of not having the capacity for multiple family members to connect by way of internet. This is going to be the type of asset that will last for decades. And yeah. Go ahead. Oh, this, this network will last for decades and it is going to be built to where it is future proof. I know many of us are in the Tallahassee news media, all the commercials about one gig fiber and, and how fast their internet is. We are looking at bringing these capabilities to our rural communities where we're looking at initially straight out the door, two gig down, down speeds with one gig up speed. And that is the type of speed that you don't see very often in these rural communities, but we are preparing to bring that for Taylor County. So I just wanted to just give you all a heads up. I will be working closely with Ms. Pemberton, just sharing our plans with her. And so hopefully those, whatever plans the county has, we can kind of dovetail so that we're not stepping on each other's foot. But we are preparing to aggressively move forward. I would encourage the commissioners to go after these grant dollars because there is one pace where we would just continue to move forward. We would march forward based on the funding that we have access to. But the more grant funding that comes down the pipeline, we could really expedite uh, these efforts and, and really get the show on the road. Financially, you was talking about you gonna borrow Mr. Page money or you got a bigger one? Initially, for, for our three and a half county uh, territory, uh, we're looking at about $65 million for fiber optic network. And right, that's, I mean, that includes about 2,200 miles of fiber. Okay. And, and that is, I mean, that is going to be a very exciting project. Mr. Chairperson, if I, if I may, um, so Mr. Hackett is scheduled to address our local technology planning team on Thursday. He and um, three other providers who have expressed an interest will be um, offering short presentations to the planning team um, on Thursday, and I'm looking forward to hearing from everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hackett, I think you said that was two gigs up and one down stream. So two gigs down and one gig up. So two, okay. And in, in that effort that you guys are using, that's going to be if this were to proceed going forward, that's first going to be made available to the co-op members. Right, because we will be following the power lines. Mm -hmm. So you guys are going to use the right-of-way service that you already have, agreements that you already have, to then incorporate uh, fiber into that. And in that, you're saying that this service is going to be an affordable effort in comparison to that, whether that be a uh, proposed or, or something that's stated as in place currently because some of the things that I hear from different folks in the areas that I'm in is 
we just don't have any options for service. And then in some of those other conversations, it's well, there's there may be a potential there, but it's out of reach, but affordability. And that was you raise a good point because when we looked at the various projects and we looked at the various technologies that are available, uh, the one piece that we have kept coming back to is it had to be a service offering that was affordable. And so the base layer of the speeds uh, initially is going to be 100 megabits download and 100 megabits per second upload. And that's going to be priced at $49.95. Of course, the, the two gig service, it's going to be closer to about $99 per month. But 95% of the st streaming that's done in the county today, my guess is over 90% of folks will be well served with 200 or 100 megabits per second service. So either of those options would still be an improvement over what folks, I guess, might not have an option for. And it's just a matter of you feeling prosperous and want to move up quickly to a full two gigs, then it's just a matter of turning on the switch. So the availability is there and either need, I guess, what I say. It will be built or preference. <laughs> Maybe yes. that's the thing. Every location will be built to handle two gig down speed download and then one gig upload. And then it's just a matter of configuring the router. Mr. Chairperson, if I may. So now you have me intrigued. I know we've had a couple of conversations, but um what so you know we can be prone to electrical out outages. You know, we're in a coastal area. Mm -hmm. So if residents lose power, do they then lose internet? They can't. No, there are some uh, uninterruptible power supplies that can be purchased. Okay. But the, the light on the fiber will still be on at the substation. So the light on the fiber will be injected at the substation. See any more? Okay, we're gonna move on. Board recommendation. Go ahead. Um, I think you have some Susan about the emergency program at Keaton Beach. Mr. Moody, you remember we talked about that? I don't remember how many years ago. Uh, but we have discussed that, and um, I don't know if it just fell by the wayside or what happened, but there's uh, this one citizen, he's probably caught the yellow too, but um, brought it back up to me. And, um, you know, at the time when we discussed it, I thought it sounded like a good idea. And I, I still think it sounds like something that we that we need to pursue if we can. So um, I'd like to put this on the next agenda or if you can get some information. I'll have to, um, I'll reach out to emergency management and see if they've moved forward at all. From what I recall, the last time it was discussed, we, um, that was an emergency management initiative. to what? I believe at the time we discussed it, that was possibly an emergency management initiative. I'll, I'll have to follow up with them and see. And, and we, we did not identify, as the board did not identify any funding for that. And I, I remember now the sheriff, I think the sheriff came, came over and didn't he come and talk to us about that? He did. That? He did. Yeah, and he had a place picked out down there by Poster Mr. Sebesky. And, um, but, um, what do y'all, what do you think? He, he said, and I've seen it too, when that, Storm comes up in that canal full of oak and salt sea. There's no way emergency vehicles could leave the boat ramp and get out like it needs to go. We need a boat ramp down near the head of the canal down there, really. And that's what he was talking about. Yeah. And uh, the FWC could use it. 
Coast Guard can use it if they needed to. And you and know, boats. and the county can use it because so they've got air boats and, and offshore boats. If, if, you know, if we really needed a plane crash or something like that, they need to get to it in a hurry. They don't need to be waiting on it in the canal. And they're not going to get traffic jam at the boat ramp, that's for sure. Uh, Wayne brought it up to us last year. And uh, I think we need to follow through with that. Yeah, we're going to have an ambulance waiting down there for them to exactly. bring, uh, you know, someone up that needed help. And that might be the difference between life and death. Um, My understanding is the sheriff is still uh, looking into those options. It's that that not going away. He's just still looking at the potential there. It's the last conversation that I had with the sheriff. But I wonder, will you uh, talk with him and see where he is with that? And, um, you know, what, what needs to happen for, for us to uh, move forward with such a project as this? We call the emergency boat ramp. Is that what we call it? Um, well, yeah, all service ramp for the for for emergency situations and used only for that and you know sheriff department game department everybody could use it um, and we really need to be planning ahead and thinking about this all the time we're going to need more boat ramps we're going to need more parking because y'all saw it this year it, it's not going to do nothing but more and more people coming to taylor county more and more people coming to jefferson county a bad county i mean we we're fixing to have more and more people here. You can hear me. It's a no-brainer there. Every realtor in Perry, the busy they can be. I mean, that's just, I've talked to several different people lately, said, you know, people looking for property, all buying property all over Taylor County. Mm -hmm. That's been for sale for years. Mm -hmm. And those people are going to have a boat. And we just, we need to get a long-range plan to really start planning ahead to have a big parking lot and another good boat ramp somewhere we're talking about getting spring warrior and that will help that will take a little bit of pressure off heat and beach but we need we need to be planning ahead uh, and, and looking for a piece of property down there that has enough room for parking and and, and good double lane boat ramp or something i mean that's just it's coming double and like triple lane that we're going to need a place for a commercial boat we really do bad you know and there's, there, with grant system the way it is, we could probably get some grant money to buy some more property and, and build some more boat ramps. But we, I mean, it's not going away. It's going to get more and more people coming. Well, I think building the ramps just one piece of the puzzle because then you've got to accommodate for what that does to the traffic in those areas, and then doing something about bridges and trucks and trailers. So no, no. there's it's a multifaceted vision. Right. And the county's got a big piece of property in St. Hatchet. You know, we got 60 acres down there, right near the mouth of the river. And we need to be kind of getting us a long range plan to work something in that direction right there that will be useful for Taylor County and the people for years to come. I mean, and I've had several people ask me about that property. Why is it just sitting there? You know, and uh, it's just sitting there. And it's right there, it's closer to the mouth of the river than anything else down there. I mean, are you familiar with that piece? I'm familiar with the property. I'm just not sure of the environmental impacts that you have on the marsh and having enough. But um, for the the of the so that's kind of what, but um, there's been several discussions about that parcel, yes. But for the general yeah, there's also, the, you know, you say 60 acres, so it's not just 60 high acres, there's 60 acres of ground there, but. A bit of that's not going to be usable for this, kind, in my opinion. I'm not the engineer. I certainly don't understand what I'm talking about. There's, there's usable ground there, certainly. But uh, there again, that's going to put traffic and other issues into that location. It'll have, it'll have neighbors that don't want nobody near them. Either. <laughs> that's what it'll boil down to. I mean, well, some of them done complained about it, and we got talking about it down there one time. And the people already went to complaining, oh, I don't want nobody more down my road, you know, but everybody's going to have to give and take a little bit for the future, you know, because people are coming, you know. Anyone else? Yeah, sir. I've got one more thing. Okay. I just want to say that uh, this weekend I was at a, a public place eating, and um, 
I had a, a lady come up to me and she uh, is someone that uh, has her own business and she works with the state. She's been heavily involved with a lot of projects. But anyway, she told me, she said, she was talking about our county administrator. She said, I want to tell y'all something. She said, y'all have got the best county administrator in Florida. She said, I work all over Florida. And she said, she is the best. And I just want you to know that, Wanda, that you are appreciated by us and that other people outside of this room see what you do. I know you work a lot of hours and you're dedicated. I just want to thank you for your service. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I appreciate all the other staff also that, you know, we've got good employees, good staff, and I appreciate the work of, of all. And they make it huge impact on what anything that I can do. I depend very heavily on them and um, owe, owe our successes to them. And I think that you, they have done a really good job considering in the last two years how short staff we've been and all the restrictions that we've had and everything going on with the pandemic. Um, and I think that the work has carried on very well. Um, so thank you. Okay, anyone else? Motion adjourned. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, all in favor? We have to have care.